Hey there, guys and gals. I am doing this video kind of late at night, so the box is kind of dark. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see everything that's going on. But this is an Adventure Force Titanium Ball Gun. Think Adventure Horse's take on the Rival series, which is why you see Rival Balls here. Uh, supposedly, the hopper on the Titanium is removable, and you can actually use a regular Rival magazine with regular rival ball. The ball ammunition is actually the same size. Like, there's no difference. It's not like X shots versus elite darts. In this case, it's just ball ammo. Ball ammo. I wanted to do nice, something nice for Grim since he's been letting me unbox his guns. So I went and got him this. I was going to get him one of the electronic ones, but eh, not really worth it. Um, at least in my opinion, because just buying the batteries, like six D cells, is like twenty dollars a pop every time. That there's no point in my book in doing that. So I went and got him this. Got him a some mag a one magazine, some more bullets for his ball gun, since he's going to be the only one with the war with the ball gun. Though that may change in the near future. So yeah, let's 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 jump into these. So if you want to know what you get inside a titanium, you get the blaster. You get a hopper that is removable. You get eight tactical strike rounds, which are the adventure price. Adventure price? Adventure force equivalent to rival rounds. And instead of if you got a Phantom Core rival gun, you would get the flags for red and blue to show which team you're on. Uh, in the case of Adventure Force, what you get are face plates for your actual blaster. They go here. Uh, just kind of pull them out as best you can. Uh, so it's green by default to go with the blaster, but there's red and blue ones that you can put on either side of the blaster. Should you want to show what team you're on, by the way. I don't think I put this in right. I definitely did not put this in right. Nope, 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 nope. Oh, I see, I see, I see. So it doesn't slide in, it clips in. Uh, when you buy a rival magazine, you get the 12 shot magazine. A lot of the rival guns don't actually come with the 12 shot magazine, they come with weird other magazines. Uh, two clips, should you want to attach your magazine somewhere. I believe it'll fit into the rail, so I'm not sure exactly because this is the first one that we've been, we, we, we have to use. Uh, it's a 12 round magazine, but you get 3, 6, 9, 12. 15, 18 rounds with it, so they actually give you extras, which is nice. So what I'm going to do is, as usual, I'm just going to tear through these boxes in super speed. So yeah, this is everything disassembled. Um, well, for the most part, I didn't know who yet. Uh, the way the rival magazines work is pretty simple. You just take this piece and you start loading your balls. There's like a little bit of a lip around here. So you can load in your 12 balls. Gotta say, the sound of it is relatively cheap. But that, that spring system does not sound good. Nope, that's 12. You might be able to fit in a 13. Eh, kinda. It, it's clearly popping up the top. So, let's read about 
this boy. What do we got? We got a trigger lock here. So the trigger you can always pull. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, you got your tactical up here. This is also your prime. I believe. Yep. It's tough. Whoa. It's pretty tough. You got your hopper. You can fill it with any kind of balls, realistically. And then there's a little switch here. Oh, it's way simpler than I was expecting, to be honest. Um, you prime it like you would normally. Bam. Uh, there is also this, which I don't think does anything right now. Oh, I see. So the hopper, uh, sorry, trigger lock is if it's out to the left, that means you can fire. If it's out to the right, that means you cannot fire. All right, I want to explain real quick before we get to firing this. Uh, this switch that I didn't know what it did before, it's the reset switch. So if it gets jammed, or you prime, and something's jammed, this switch is supposed to fix it, essentially. I haven't had that work right now. You're like, why does it look weird? Because I don't have that on. Uh, so with the hopper it comes with, there's actually two ways to unload. So I've got the eight balls in there now. You gotta make sure that you, there's pressure applied so that it pushes the ball down. But if you wanna get them out, you could unpop the top, or you push this forward, the balls just fall right out. And you can see some of them didn't come down. That's why you usually see people with Adventure Force hoppers shaking, or just hoppers in general, because sometimes it just doesn't be right, and you gotta shake it. Shake, shake, shake it off. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, uh, in contrast to a Nerf magazine, uh, with a Nerf magazine, there is also a little switch by the top. So all you gotta do, is grab your bolts, push them in. Now, the difference is the hopper is obviously not spring-fed. Makes sense. This is obviously spring-fed, there's a spring in there. Once you tap the button to release, oh, they're going. Oh, make sure I get this on camera. And I cannot release. Okay, cool, there we go. So the moment you pull back, they just eject, and that's just the way it is. Uh, I'm gonna be doing a firing test in slow-mo like I usually do, but before I do that, I just want you guys to hear this. This is the absolute loudest blaster I've ever heard in my entire life. Like, I think if you fire this inside, you're going to have to have some kind of ear covers because it is deafening. Deafening, deafeningly loud. Primed? Why? Uh, also, one thing to note is you can, in fact, use Nerf mags, or Nerf rival mags in it. So, the way it works is the catch is on the front of the hopper. So I thought that meant that's where it would catch on the rival magazine. That's actually wrong. You just have to slide this in and out of the way to make sure that it's in and locked into place. So you want to make sure that the catch is the same and you want the grabber over here to be around this. So you load it in this way and it's not as, you know, well held in place as the hopper, but it's still held in and it will feed. And it's still deafeningly loud. Also very powerful, very, very powerful. Now we're gonna do the slow-mo shots. Uh, we're gonna do it with the hopper and then the rival mag. And then I will try and find balls for the next three, four hours. Cause these guys are bouncing everywhere. We're gonna start with a tactical strike hopper filled with eight. As you can see, it's got both kinds of rival rounds in it, well, tactical strike and then rival round. I think I'm gonna get, I'm gonna put some headphones on so it's not deafening because I'm right here and man, firing this inside actually hurts. All right, I got some headsets. Some headsets? No, only one headset. I got a headset to put on my head because this thing is loud. So here comes the slow mo.
It's not jammed. It just didn't feed a ball. And now we're gonna slow-mo with the rival mag, which I suspect will have less trouble feeding. But I could be completely wrong. It also looks absolutely ridiculous. Like, look, look how ridiculous it looks. And as you can see, I've mixed in some technical strike rounds with the rival round. Oh, the whole thing slides. I think I just loaded more than one ball. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's more than one ball loaded in there right now, but here we go, slow-mo. Okay, the reset switch works.
Uh, it seems if you put in a rival and a tactical strike round at the same time, it will always shotgun load. That's awesome! Hey there, guys and gals. Go back on the firing range. We've got the hopper filled with big shots, half rival, half tactical strike rounds. And we also have one rival magazine filled with four technical strike rounds. The rest are 12 rival rounds. Um, I'll be firing from the hopper first. We got it set up over there because I don't want to be shooting at the uh, mantle with you know, gun like this. So here we go. So it begins. I have a feeling I'm going to have to rebuild the firing range after I've shot with the hopper because it's going to be all knocked down, I'm sure. Because this thing is actually pretty accurate. I'm in my usual spot and one of these days I'm going to measure exactly how far away from the shooting range I am. But if I had to take a guess, I would probably say I'm, I'm about 20 feet away from the shooting range. About. Which is kind of average. Uh, supposedly almost all these guns say they go at least 60 feet, so 20 should be a pretty good gauge. If you can't hit 20, something is very wrong. But, here we go! Does it count if it knocks it down because it flew through the air? Mm -hmm. Also, that, that rival round came right back to me. Whoa! The speed at which they're being ejected is insane. I'm also firing real, real low. I'll we'll have to go higher. Higher, higher, higher. Hey, they're coming right back to me. Hey, I'll take that ricochet. I am hitting nothing with the hopper. This gun fires real low. Last shot. Perfect, I hit something. Jeez. Got all eight rounds back. I'm gonna reset for you guys. The firing range is now reset. I'll be loading in a rifle. This is good ammo. So I'm gonna get shotgun blasts. Pretty much every time there's a Rival ball followed by a tactical strike ball, which is awesome, by the way. Here we go. Starting now. Oh, the beauty, the majesty. Here we go, shotgun blast. Whoa, not a shotgun blast, but dang, that ball went high. Shotgun blast. Ooh, went around because it was a shotgun blast, but they both came back to me. Oh, beautiful. All right, explain to me why it's more accurate coming out of a rival magazine than it is coming out of the hopper. They should both be fed into the chamber exactly the same, but they're not. I feel like this is a shotgun blast. Oh, it's jammed. Firing. Oh, wait. Oh, it's hard to hit a single target because there's no sight. Oh, that one curved and came all the way back. I think I'm out after this. Maybe not. Last one. Oh! Okay, it's way more accurate coming out of this. Oh, that's amazing. We unfortunately did have one jam out of the rival magazine though, which 
kind of sucks. But considering it's a generic blaster, I'm not that mad about it. So, things to note that I think are super cool about this. The fact that it does take rival magazine. So, this is a 12 round. I believe they also make, I think the, uh, let's see. I think the Helios comes with a seven round bag, which is so weird. I believe there's also an eight round mag. This is 12. I think they go up to 18 rounds, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, but potentially you can put in as long a mag as you want and it'll still feed. Super cool thing about it is though, if you have a rival magazine and you mix and match your balls, it seems like if you put rival first, then I'm gonna review the footage before I put this out and be like, oh, which one has to come first for it to shotgun blast? Because it does shotgun blast and holy crap, that's amazing. That, oh, and it's still so accurate. One thing is the shotgun blast, what I'm thinking happens is as they eject, the first ball hits the second ball, so they go around your target, but still, it's really, really accurate. And for some reason, even though it's just the ball feeding mechanism, the hopper, for some reason, shoots, when it loads the ball in, the ball comes out way lower than you would expect. But when you put a rival mag in, it is spot on deadly. My only real issue with this gun, despite it was super cheap, it works, comes with rounds. Uh, my only real qualm with this gun is how loud it is. And I strongly suggest you can hear that? That's actually not the gun, that's the rival magazine. The rival magazines sound terrible. Um, they sound so cheap. My qualm is that you can't, I wouldn't really recommend firing this inside. I mean, I know you're not supposed to fire it inside, but if you happen to be messing around inside, first of all, the, the balls come out incredibly fast. And second, it's so loud. Like me sitting in the chair firing it, I had to put on headphones. That's how loud it was. You need ear protection to fire this thing inside. Outside, I don't think it'll be as much of a problem unless you're firing it like this, which I highly, 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 highly don't recommend. I'm also super stoked because I bought this for Grim since he was being so nice and he always buys me stuff anyway. I was like, I'm gonna get him a ball gun. It's gonna be great. I was originally gonna buy him one of the electronic ones, but I don't think it's worth it if you have to pay $20 to put batteries in it every time. That just doesn't sound worth it to me. Maybe it'll sound worth it to somebody else, but not me. So bottom this, was thinking, oh, it'd be okay, but I think he might actually really like this one. I think he will. And he wanted a ball shotgun. So I got him a ball shotgun. He has plenty of rounds since I bought him extra rival rounds, or extra generic rounds. So he can definitely mix and match and fire shotgun blasts all day long. The Nerf War is gonna be so damn good. So damn.